Hello there, I'm Chef Johnny, and this is Texas Style Cuisine. Appreciate you joining by. As you can see, you got the can cooker out today. I've had some requests, actually, for uh, doing a barbacoa-type uh, meal in the Dutch ovens. Well, I thought this lent itself a little bit better to doing it in the can cooker, so it's going to be a similar type process, but we are going to make venison barbacoa today using a deer neck. Got my can cooker here. First thing I want to do is, is just take some uh, non-stick spray and we want to spray this real good. And what this is going to do is, is really help with cleanup. Just coat the inside really well. I usually will take my lid, give me a little spray up on my lid. That's covered good, should be ready to go. I'm going to sit the racks in here. These racks are in half so you can get them through the, the small uh, opening. Can cooker's ready to go. Let's get it to the side and let's get the star of this mill up here. It's a nice young buck I shot last year. It's going to cut this neck out of the package. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it and I'm going to salt this. This is a great big piece of meat. So it'll take it pretty liberty with some salt, garlic, black pepper. And I'll tell you this, if we were cooking barbacoa, kind of the traditional uh, Texas here around San Antonio. Of course, we'd be using a cow, cow cheeks, cow head, salt, pepper, maybe garlic. Not everybody uses garlic, but that is one thing that's used, and uh, not a lot of not a lot of additional things in there. Let's garlic this side, salt this. I had a total of uh, about three tablespoons of salt here, so part of that we're gonna add to the uh, the mix we have that's going to go in here with it. This definitely is not a Texas style barbacoa because of some of the ingredients we're going to add. That neck I think is ready to go. I'm going to move it to the side, or move the to the side, bring my can cooker up here and I'm just going to drop this neck right down in there. And I have got some chipotle peppers blended up here and uh, what I did was I took a small can, you can find those six ounce, seven ounce cans of Chipotle's, six or eight peppers in adobo sauce. That's what you want. I blended that with a 12 ounce beer. So I'm going to pour this in and I'm just pouring this over the top. Got it coated pretty good. Let's turn it over. We'll get some down the other side. have a little bit left and what I'm going to do with what's left is I'm going to drop in a tablespoon of uh, cumin, about a tablespoon and a half of black pepper and some chili powder, rest of my garlic, and oh maybe another tablespoon of salt. Now I've got a just a shiner bock that we're going to pour in here with it. And I'm going to pour the rest of my mixture over this. Make sure I get all those seasonings off of it so they stick. All those seasonings are in. Pour the rest of this beer in. So that gives me a total of two Shiner Box in there. So I've got in my seasonings, we'll go over them again real quick. I've got um, about a, I've got about a tablespoon of uh, salt on the neck itself, a tablespoon of garlic, uh, probably a tablespoon of black pepper. Then I have uh, in my mix, I have a tablespoon of black pepper, another tablespoon of garlic, another tablespoon of salt. And that's along with my chipotle peppers, two beers. And we're gonna drop some onion in there also that will uh, help give a little bit of flavor to this and a bay leaf. So I have my onion, it's just quartered up. I have two of them, kind of medium sized onions. If you were doing this in a Dutch oven or you were doing it in a uh, uh, can cooker itself and you don't have the racks, put your onions in first. And what that'll do is give you a platform to sit your meat on so it's not right up tight against the, uh, the bottom. Less likely for it to burn. 
drop in my bay leaves. I've got a big one and two small ones. Lids on. Snap it down. Make sure your gasket's on there. It's ready to get on the fire. Let me show you how we do that. You can see here I got a bunch of coals already cooked down. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to start this out on a trivet. I don't think if you look here that over the fire right now, I can get it quite hot enough. This wind has really picked up since I started. So I'm going to take a trivet, drop my trivet right there. That'll hold it up off the ground and I can get some heat up underneath here. So I'm just going to shovel up my, my coals. And of course, one thing you got to be doing is when you're using this on the open fire is, is keep a fire going so that you always have coals. So you can see I got a couple more logs cooking down here and I'm gonna, as soon as I get this done I am going to drop on a few more uh, a few more uh, logs so that we have a way to feed this fire for I'm thinking maybe about three hours inside the can cooker might go a little longer than that in other situations but I think with the can cooker we'll be fine with that three hour mark Set my can cooker down on my trivet. We're going to let this get good and hot. And what we want it to do is, is, uh, want it to start steaming. If you get it, if you get steaming too much, it will, uh, you'll boil out your water. So you don't want that to happen. So we're going to try to, um, get this thing steaming. And then as it gets hot, we can start raising it up a little higher up off this fire. Now, today, my, my outdoor kitchen is on the south side of my, my bunkhouse. So, if I would have been over there, we'd have no problems. But there wasn't any wind hardly this morning. This wind has just picked up. So, we're going to have to work with it and deal with it the best we can. And see if we can get this uh, cooked off and finished. And you can see that we're starting to get steam up out of this... Um, can cooker now you don't want a whole lot of steam you want a nice slow steady it's starting to get be a little bit big so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull some of the coals away from the outer edge let me back off again right there and you can kind of see around that outer edge we have some coals kind of banked up there I'm gonna pull those up move them back over by the fire and I'll come over here and show you you can see I've got new wood on the fire making more coals because this is a three hour long cook and this wind has picked up it's really making things tough but uh, let me show you kind of how I pull some of the fire off hours in you still see we have good steam so I'm not gonna worry about um, uh, liquid right now as long as I see steam coming out I know I still got some good liquid in there and uh, again excuse me for the wind it was not blowing when I set this up out here but you tell I'm keeping the the coals on the north side of this because with the heat blowing if I put coals over here on the south side all that heat's just gonna blow away from it this wind it's, it's pushing these coals, it's heating them up uh, really well, and it's going across that cooker. So as long as I have this strong wind blowing, I'm going to keep coals uh, on the north edge or the wind leading wind. So wherever your wind's coming from, you'll know to kind of keep them on that side. And I figure about another hour, we ought to be all right. Uh, if I start seeing the where I've got good heat and no steam, then uh, I may uh, check to see if I need more liquid, but right now it's looking good, so we're gonna let it keep cooking. We'll take this off and see how it turned out. See if we got our meat tender. All right, let's check this out. Here, we're gonna pop the hinges take it off because be careful here because you can get steam out this one I don't think that's going to happen but there's a little bit but if it's a lot 
you can get a bunch of steam up in your face, so be careful with that. That neck, we're going to see if it broke down or not. Let's get right here, and we're going to see if we can dump this out. See how hot it is. I'm going to move it over here. Bring in my bowl. I'm going to take my rubber gasket off. Pour this into our bowl and see how it turned out. Looks good. Smells good. Smells good. Let's move our can cooker to the side. And yeah, we're going to see how this turned out. Remember we were looking to have the meat falling off the bone. It's going to take this. Oh yeah, see? Look here. That's what I wanted to see. That meat's coming right off of that bone. This meat, look at there. Look at there. Now I'll tell you this, it did take longer to cook than I thought. I was expecting three hour cook. Looks like it's going to be a little over four hours is what it took to do this. I, I thought it would cook a little faster in the can cooker, but uh, it didn't cook as fast as I thought it might. First time I'd ever done it in there. So you can see this is off this bone real well. Mm. See, that's about as clean as I'm gonna I'm gonna get it, but you can tell we cooked all the we cooked till all the meat would come off. Not leaving much on it. Drop it back in my can cooker. Now we have our meat and all of our juices. Check this out. There's our meat. It's looking pretty. Let's see if we need to pull some more of this. You can just see it just tearing apart. Okay, sorry. Now, if you don't want to, you know, if you don't want it too hot, don't. Uh, don't pull out your, don't pour all your juices in on it. And that'll cut out some of the heat, but you'll still have some of the flavor. This has most of the juices with it, so that's it. We've got enough pulled apart here that we can make some tacos. So let's see if we can make some tacos real quick. You look at this, boy, it is just falling apart. Mmm. That tastes wonderful. Got a little spice to it because of all the chipotle peppers. But let me move it a little bit to the side. We'll see if we can make a taco. So, we have got some nice corn tortillas. Bought those this morning. They are fresh. They are not store bought. They are homemade. Got some pico de gallo on top of our venison barbacoa. Taco number one. Let's go for taco number two. Again, some beautiful barbacoa, nice and tender. Come in here and give me a little pico de gallo. And I'll put a, a link down below on how to make pico de gallo. I'm going to add a little guacamole to the mix. right up on top these tacos are looking pretty so let's uh, give them a try taco tastes great a uh, little lime juice across the top will be nice I didn't bring any limes out with me but this is a very good the uh, can cooker broke this down well like I said it took a little bit longer than I thought it would I was thinking about three hours maybe three and a half tops and we pushed about four and a half hours. But we had that real strong cold wind come in. That made a difference also because we were catching that north wind. A little bit harder to keep our temperatures and do things like that. But it cooked up well. Can cooker. Always love using it. 
a rich, rich flavor in this venison barbacoa. The chipotle peppers gave us just enough uh, heat to it, but it put some tremendous flavor in there. And then of course, you know, we have our garlic and our salt and our pepper and our cumin and then the uh, uh, ancho chili powder. That just helped out a lot, but a great taste in taco. Hope you give it a try. Hope you tell your friends and family about it. Share us on your social media and we're gonna see you down the road on Texas style barbecue and cuisine. How them boys put food away beats all I've ever seen. 